Is this the start of a meme coin super cycle? I think it is. We're going to go over some other news such as CZ and also BTC pricing and the tube stuff as well with our actionables at the end. But in particular, let's talk about meme coins. Starting with though, CZ Binance has been uh, released two days early. This is big news. The guy is the most publicly doxxed goat in crypto. Do not fade anything this guy does or says or is connected to. That's just, it's just, it's, he's, in a, he's a whale. He's worth billions of dollars. I don't know what their CZ, uh, what the Binance bill was. It was significant, like billions of dollars and they just paid it. Market cap of the things were in green. Remember, 65K was that kind of key point where still green, but it's meme coins that have been playing crazy hard. Fair and greed, 61, a little bit high. Remember, these are the times when you want to buy right down when it's super fearful. And if we have a look at over one year, we can see that we can go up to like 60 and then just dip on down again. But we can, of course, go higher as, as well. And we might be getting into back into this greedy range for a little bit. If we were back in this greedy range, this would be good. It would just be a, a time of just putting on some longs, taking some profits, and I guess being greedy, but try not to be do, too greedy. Our financial advice never will be. You know, you have to manage your own risk. Now, having a look at this chart, which Tyler's put up here, we have this high high now. We're at this on the daily, we're on a, on a high high. This is not my forte, so I'm relying on some good research from others. But I mean, this is very important. We do have to pay attention to some charts. I'm more of a fundamentals guy. And I do think fundamentals and charting, that's kind of the, the expert way to go. Obviously, the, the trend is still down. So we have to come out of the trend. We are higher. And this is, uh, this is good. Now, one thing is, if we go to Coin, Coin Glass and scroll on down, if we close right now, this would be the highest monthly close in September since crypto. So this has actually been very, very good. Ever since token 2049 breakpoint, that that kind of intersection of two conferences, I'm not necessarily saying that they caused it. I still believe, and some people call this a conspiracy theory, and that's fine. You're welcome to your own opinions. Basically, you have whales that control the markets, and then when you get you know, 25, 26,000 DGENs in two big conference centers, centers in one big city talking about crypto, that's all you see on the timeline. That's a good time to start putting some longs on, you know, announcing some bullish news, all that sort of stuff. Plus, they actually announced, you know, VC raises and things, and that can be that major catalyst. So from there, further onwards, but regardless, in September, this is the biggest we've ever done. Let's have a look here at some short-term holders. RV stands for market value to realize the value. It's uh, used to measure how much Bitcoin's market price, what it's worth today, compares to the price people actually paid for it. If MV is high, people are generally in profit. And if it's low, they're in a loss. Haven't had to worry about this since the previous cycle. So I'm just reading off another screen. So we can see right now we're at this section where it's low, but it's starting to cross. We've got just things crossing. And what comes next has been a boost up. It's pretty much always in crypto, in my experience. People will buy retail, small people, and then they'll get shaken out. They'll lose conviction. And that those tokens will flow to the whales. And this will happen over and over and over. Remember, on a trade, there's always another person buying that side of the trade. So if you think you're selling, someone else is there is generally buying, with the exception of like liquidity pools where someone's just putting money and they've maybe forgotten about it. So, it's, so what I'm trying to point out there is it's not true for everything. Like if a meme coin is going down or if there's a token which is just not performing well, like uh, W isn't, you know, maybe that's not the, the right time to be buying. Maybe it is. Or, you know, there's failed tokens out there like Serum or Celsius. Probably not a good idea to buy those. You know, BTC, other people are willing to buy because I guess they're looking at it as, you know, if I buy, 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 I'm net up. Whereas people with smaller bags like myself and probably you, you're potentially looking at it like, am I buying the bottom? Am I buying the bottom? Can't buy the bottom. But anyway, long story short, up we go is what I think the chart is showing us. We've got this next one here as well which is short-term holders realize price. So when short-term holders and their realized prices at this level here, 66.3 thousand, then all those people that have paid, you know, this premium in this, in this point, you know, 70,000, 74,000, whatever, they're now going to be on average, you know, basically break even. So you can sometimes see people actually start to just cash out and like, okay, I survived it. I didn't lose any money and I'm out. And that can, of course, mean that we could dip down. So this can be another little bit of resistance here. Um, but in general, as you'll see, 
when you have these points, we just kind of rock it up. So we can have to, we have to be aware that some people might be like that, but in general, we're at this point. As soon as we hit there, up, I think we go. Now this is from CryptoQuant, and I'm going to start to do a lot more stuff from Asari, starting from Monday. But for now, this is what is on, on the researcher's timeline. And we don't know what these 73 tokens are, but the average monthly exchange flow, inflow plus outflow. So the exchange obviously has, you know, value of tokens coming in and coming out. And this is, uh, this is related to the fact that when there's a, a, a lack of activity, we start to see a price pump up. And we've seen this here. So not a lot of activity. And this is, you know, in and out, not a lot of, not a lot of activity. And then up we go, not a lot of activity. And then up we go. I don't know how true this metric will be for the rest of the cycle as more people use DeFi, but still the majority of funds are being used on centralized exchanges. You can even go back further, right? Get pair, boom, up we go. So, you know, the thesis is pretty simple. Quarter four is going to be juicy. I'm just showing you reasons why that thesis is intact. We've also got this one here. This is total market cap three. So this is excluding stable coins, BTC, ETH. This is just basically alts, essentially trying to break out. So we could be coming into a bit of an alt season. There'll be like little bits of alt season coming throughout the next you know, year or thereabouts, but maybe we hit one now. There was one tweet, which I won't pull up because I think it'll kind of encourage degeneracy where someone went to Binance or Bybit and with like $200,000, put on a whole lot of longs on all the major kind of ecosystem tokens, Sol, Ton, Sui, ETH, BTC, a few others with cross margin, meaning uh, if one went down and another one went up, you still have that same liquidity as opposed to isolated. Crosses, it's just one way of doing these, this leverage play. That person turned 200,000 into $7 million right before, I guess, token 2049 breakpoint when things were like, quiet and then bam off they popped now that was pretty cool well done to that person but what i'm trying to just point out is i really do feel we're going to get a little bit euphoric and i wouldn't be shorting anything at present next one here we've got uh, this from st pump this is a global liquidity index and the top coincides with quarter four 2025 now this could be correct it could be a little bit longer we, we don't have an exact play here one thing to keep in mind that, you know, the long-term cycle is this is based on like 65 months. And I believe in something different, the 18.6 year property cycle, but it still seem they still seem to have cycles within cycles, right? You know, there's a halving cycle within the major 18.6 year cycle at present. That may change in, in future cycles. Keep in mind that this was a bit off because pretty sure, you know, this was euphoric. 2004 was euphoric or starting to get euphoria, uh, 2006. 2007, this was all euphoria. And then end of 2007 was crashing down. So it's not always correct. You can see global liquidity up and then it kind of peaked. I guess this is point where they just money printed, right? Remember crash, big crash here, uh, sizable crash in the markets, global financial crisis, it pumped up liquidity and then down we went. Long-term anyway, we're kind of at this point where crypto wise, we could be around 2025. This is another good one here. And this is too much in terms of just what I would say, kind of witch doctory, but I still want to point it out. It's a different theory. And it's one just to keep in mind that this is a cycle. So 1,064 days, all time high to all time high. This would put us to the 6th of October, 2025 in reference to just Bitcoin. So we've got plenty of time to grow. It may go longer, it may not go as long, but either way, 2025 will be a heated year. The real question is, will Seoul get to over $300 by the end of this year. I've got a bet on with Michael Pizzino. I say yes. He said no. Anyway, this is the date there. Monday, October 6th. CryptoQuant has this as well. These things are very, very important. This is just relating to spot ETFs. So the BTC spot ETF uh, started and we've got short-term holders and long-term holders. When long-term holders dips up, short-term holders, of course, dips down. Now this could be just withdrawing from, you know, one wallet to a ledger, but it could also be, you know, people just selling, right? People selling, being a short-term holder and just trying to hold it a little bit and then get rid of it to the people that want to hold for 10, 20 years or years or whatever it may be. But when this happens, typically we can see a price increase. Uh, not always, but typically we can see price increase. 
we've got this one here, which shows it a little bit better. When we see a ma major change, we'll have to use a lot more metrics than just this in case it is, you know, we don't know, we can't identify whose wallet has what, but this marks, you know, peaks in markets. When all of a sudden you start to see the long-term holders selling to the short-term holders or just sending a massive amount to the exchange, that is the peak. That is the peak. There's a kiss here. There's a kiss here. Then, you know, with each cycle, less of a kiss, I guess, because there's more people in the market, but still very apparent here. And then this was just like a kind of a mini cycle, I guess you could say, where there's a kiss here. And then that was kind of the short term peak there. And now we're looking to go back up again. Just a really good metric to know. I think it will play out for this cycle and then we'll go through a pretty brutal bear to be per perfectly honest with my viewpoint. And then after that, I actually don't know how well we're going to see stuff like this because I just don't know. Meme coin super season. Super cycle. Super cycle is like a term that I think was popularized by Suzu in the previous cycle. And it was just like a cycle is, you know, it goes up and it goes down. And he thought that a super cycle, he was wrong, by the way. He thought the super cycle would be, in a sense, something that goes up and keeps on going up, keeps on going up because there's so many more things that come in. And if it does have corrections, it's not as brutal. Well, turns out it was actually probably one of the most brutal things with FTX, with Luna, which he was, you know, involved. Um, so he was wrong. I don't believe in super cycles. Don't believe them yet. Um, basically, meme coins are taking center stage, but not typically the random ones that are just launched from pumped up fun or things like that. There'll be still some money to be gained there as we see a lot more retail come in, but it's not present. I am not expert at this. I'm probably better than, you know, the bottom of the barrel, but I'm not an expert. I don't know where I stand in overall meme coin, meme coinery kind of standings, but I have meme coins in my portfolio. So I'm, I'm above my, above many. What I'm, what I'm doing is I'm following the bonk guy and I think you should follow him with notifications on because I have a feeling he's going to lock his account in the future. Not, not a guarantee, but if he keeps on getting botted, then he will. He's very bullish on Flocky. I'm very bullish on Bonk. Although Solana's my, my home and Bonk is my favorite dog, Cat's my cat, on BNB is my favorite cat, there is value in all these other ones. You can see how well they pump up. I mean, Shiba Inu has done rem remarkably well. Doge will have its heyday as well. I mean, it's 12 cents now, but maybe it goes 12 cents to like a dollar. Maybe it goes 12 cents to 50 cents. So you have to kind of factor that in. I know a lot of people like dog with hat and it certainly gets a lot of trading volume. But all I want to point out is that, you know, having some allocation to some of these bigger ones and not necessarily all these things down here, I really don't see there's going to be much happening with Tron, to be honest. Uh, here's Simon's cat down here, still undervalued in my opinion. Uh, but having some value, having some allocation here, you're probably going to see like a five, five X throughout the cycle. I do want to show you a couple of things though. So Sheep just added 3.3 billion in market cap today. I mean, just in one day. It doesn't mean that, you know, you can go and sell hundreds of millions of dollars of it. When it moves, it moves. Bonk, this is a good one to watch. Let's have a look at it. This is the move from October last year. Obviously, October last year, it was, it was low, exceptionally low. Crypto was boring. You know, I was out there making my videos every single day and then started to get traction as people started to realize, okay, crypto is, it's come back. That was the move before we kind of came on down. It can do that again, not to the same extent. Maybe it's a 5X, maybe it's almost a 10X. I don't know, but that's why I hold a bonk. Next thing here is uh, from the bonk guy. So this is something that I'm not going to play with, but I'm putting it on your radar if you know what you're doing. BTC eco meme coins are starting to catch a bid. What do you think happens to them when Bitcoin is back to all time highs? I mentioned this because the guy, I don't know what his success rate is. And if I went through the tweet for the last six months, I would assume it would be 70% or more, which is an insanely high success rate. Bonk guy is holding a following, uh, the following BTC memes. I have no idea where you can buy these. You can go and have a look at them yourself. If you can buy them on a centralized exchange, because you know, doing it on Bitcoin is going to be higher, then maybe you want to go and accumulate a little bit of these. Nothing crazy. Maybe you don't. Don't mind. There's value to be had in multiple sectors, but Bitcoin OGs will kind of look after their own to a degree. This as well, one guy mentioned to me, uh, I suggest going and signing up, getting yourself on the wait list, uh, graph fun. Don't really know what that branding is. Don't understand it. Explain it to me. Someone in the comments, explain to me 
am I silly? You have to go to the website. You have to join the whitelist. A whole lot of people here. Join the whitelist means you connect your wallet, Twitter, and then you join Telegram and you get a hundred grand. Uh, it's a launcher. It's like a launcher on BNB. To the Salada calendar. Always a bookmark this baby. It's always got the alpha. We've got some even lab stuff today. And remember the dupe active staking rewards vote starts now. This here is a little bit of a recap from Fabiano. We'll quickly, quickly go through a couple of things. So uh, we won't worry about Metropolis. Basically, the best API in crypto is crypto DeFi, or at least decentralized crypto, is Jupiter's. But the big one is this. The second, Jupiter for Jupiter, J for J voters, is about the usage of the unclaimed Jupe tokens from Jupanary 2024. These are three options. Use the tokens to fund ASR for next year, burn the tokens, or return the tokens to the community multisig. Go to vote.jupe.ag and cast your vote. Remember, you can normally abstain as well. I'm probably leaning towards just burn the tokens. Uh, I think using the tokens to fund the ASR for the next one year is, is, is certainly an option. Going to the community multisig, definitely not my option there. The DAO is an incredible DAO, but DAOs are still in their infancy. They still need a lot of direction. There's still a lot of work. They're not going to make every decision correctly. And I think this is probably the, the one for me. I really want you to decide what's best for you, but I do want you to vote. If you're into meme, meme coinery, you can go and DM Joe, Joe, Dao, Joe Do and get some early access to Ape Jupiter. So if you didn't know, actually I'll go back to the previous tweet quickly. If you didn't know, Jupiter acquired two major companies, Solana FM and CoinHall. CoinHall is now basically, they're doing I believe they're involved with like the, the ape Jupiter stuff. So if you're good at this, or if you want to play this, you want to just go and DM and, and see what happens, see what happens, see where the value is. It would be great if there was a cool way of doing meme coins, which wasn't as, as extractive as pump.fun. We'll see, we'll see how it goes. Putting this on your radar because I haven't actually played on it or I, I haven't played on it enough. Maybe someone on the team has been playing on it a little bit, but Solana on Ethereum, Ethereum's first, S I have no idea how well it does. Kind of cool. This is Eclipse, and you've got all these different apps over there. You've got Helios and Scarver and uh, Mango, Orca, and all these other ones here. I mean, there's some building happening over there. Maybe something you want to go and try out because, well, just maybe it is. And also bridging to other ecosystems. Now is probably, I keep on mentioning debridge, but now we're, you know, we're at the point where maybe debridge's token launch is not going to be so favorable. And you have to decide, do I want to keep on using Dbridge or am I happy to use a UI that's not as pretty, but maybe the fees are less. In which case, you might go between Wormhole and Dbridge. Either way, these are two options that you have and Wormhole is still an option. It's just not the nicest one. I'll just show it to you quickly though, just so you're aware. This is what the website looks like. So the UI is certainly not as user-friendly. If you're new to this sort of thing, then just do a small transaction at first because it's just not as clean. And UI is everything crypto, so that's a bit of a bit of annoying for me. Let's jump to the actionables. The dupe ASR vote starts today. And the next thing is try to get a DeFi Dungeons pre-sale. That's not financial advice, of course. If you don't know what that is, it's from the team behind the heist. The heist, I wish they would still kind of put a lot of effort into that, and I guess they are to some degree, but it seems strange to go off into another project. But nevertheless, they are, and if I manage to get pre-sale, I will, if, let's say I get two or three, I would sell two of them and just hold one and, and give it a go. Also watch my 10K to 100K video. Airdrop actionables, Cube Exchange, Grass Dashboard, and Judo Soul and Soul in the Meteor Pool in Camino. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. Remember the whole goal of these videos is to save you time. So make sure you subscribe to come back for the next one. Cheers.